All right, everybody, this is going to be the introduction to vector calculus. Um, this is going to be some pretty tough stuff. Um, I'm going to try to cover a lot throughout the rest, pretty much till summer. I'm going to do my best. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about some math in general. Um, there's a few things you got to know now. Like this point is where math, everything changes. So it's where it's going to become more applied. But after this course, it becomes more applied. So this is like the final step. This is the last part. Once you understand vector calculus, um, triple integration, all this fun stuff, you will have a solid foundation in which you can actually apply things now because we're dealing with multiple things in three dimensions um, and how they affect one another. Really cool stuff. But in reality, like when you're doing a computation or a calculation of, say, just even a basic triangle, math is not going to give you a perfect, like, three, four, five measurement, you know, um, for like a. Uh, special right triangle cases. You're going to have decimal points. Uh, it's it's ugly, you know. So the world is not really a nice place for math. Um, but it, once once you understand this complex material um, and how it's used, then it's pretty much it's going to be understood by computer. A lot of things are going to be done on the computer. All these computations that we're doing, all that's going to be done by the computer. You need to understand the theory, the concepts. Um, what exactly you're doing that's being done. Now, a lot of people say, well, in reality, I'm going to be honest with you, this material that we're going to go is not really worth studying in terms of uh, the computation. But it is, there is a very important reason why, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you. So, so why, why should you do this? Okay, computers are the dumbest thing in the world. And it, you might be saying, like, well, what? Well, it's, they seem really smart. We even call them smart, like smartphones. Um, but this tablet that I'm even using right now to make this video, it may seem highly intelligent, but it's not. It's the intelligence comes from the computer programmers, the uh, technicians, the engineers. They designed it. They designed this technology. It's a human-based intelligence. And, I mean, the device itself is retarded. It can't think on its own. It's, um, we have to tell it what to do. So part of the reason why you're going to be wanting to learn this material is because you're going to have to tell a computer how to do something. You're going to have to tell someone um, what these complex equations mean and how they can be applied, or what can you learn from this? How can it be applied? What can you do to change the world? Um, stuff like differentiation and integration, that's pretty complex stuff, just on its own. Um, and explaining it to someone um, who's not as familiar with the techniques as you are, um, like say even like a sixth grader, what is calculus? That's huge, you know? It's a big thing to understand. And with things like partial differential equations, that's some tough stuff. Partial differential equations, like in one of those textbooks, that's one of like our most precise descriptions of how the world works and the equations that we use them, like in quantum mechanics, electrodynamics, electromagnetism, heat transfer. It's all in that subject. Vector calculus, partial differential equations, that's all uh, covers all those types of things in science. So this um, stuff in this vector calculus uh, playlist, um, this is the basics. This is the basics, yeah. Um, this is where mathematical training, it's, this is like the beginning. It's just we're getting closer and closer to the real deal. We're like almost there. Um, and it's at the most advanced place it's ever been today. Uh, being taught this, you know, in, it's, it's advanced stuff. Um, getting the opportunity to teach it. Uh, we'll we'll jump into some stuff real quick. Um, oh crap! I forgot to erase some things. You didn't see anything. Okay. Anyway, so let's check out this quote. Uh, I thought it was kind of cool. Um, it says, "Science is what we understand well enough to explain to a computer. Art is everything else we do." Now, not to undermine the arts or anything, but it's just saying that s science. Um, is it something that's understood by people, and it's harder to transfer that knowledge to a computer, and that's kind of where the engineering and stuff kind of comes into play. Um, but art, I love art. Um, I, it's great. I love both stuff, science and art. It's great. Um, but everything else, it kind of has its own feel to it. There's not really a lot of things that can be described. Like when you see a sculpture or something, painting, poem, whatever, there's some things that can't be described. And that's kind of like what else is done. And science is what we can describe to the best of our knowledge, and computers are one of our resources to do that. So we're going to start with an intro on integration, um, and double integration even. Um, so just kind of looking at this. Okay, real quick. Um, 
So notice, I'm going off on a tangent again, but it's, it's cool stuff. Notice how I defined the axes here. Y in the positive direction going up, and X in the positive direction going right. Now, in math, guess what? If you're a mathematician, engineer, whatever, you get to define the space. I could switch these axes, move them crooked or whatever, but you get to define the orientation. It's like Ender's Game. There's no up in space. Um, you get to define the rules. Like, you get to define where space is. Um, and it's kind of like the Matrix. You're like Neo. You get to put stuff where you want. You are, you are in the Matrix. You are Neo. You get to control um, what's going on in your environment. So you can best manipulate it and understand it. Um, so now going back to the integration, um, there's two st types we have, indefinite integrals and definite. So indefinite is when we do not have our, do not have our limits of integration and you use, um, and you have that plus C, meaning because it could represent a ton of different functions, it's kind of like the general form. Um, and this is where we have our definite integral, where we have limits of integration or bounds, um, and that is by using the fundamental theorem of calculus, which you know as f of b minus f of a. So, moving on. Okay, you must know integration. Like, you need to have your calculus integral, integral skills, like, down um, in order to understand, like, the stuff we're going to be doing. Because simple integral stuff, if you're having problems with, like, um, integration by parts... Um, just the basic interview, or excuse me, um, integration process, like those simple computations, which is si simple single integrals, um, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. So I'd recommend going up, um, working on those skills, because we're gonna go, like breeze through it, um, and kind of make it like that's gonna be a simple like okay, and then you integrate this and you call it a day. Like we're not we're not gonna really go into depth on that because um, we got the harder stuff to work out first. So let's do this little quiz or this little test, see if you understand. Uh, test yourself to see which integration method you would use. So for the first one, you would use integration by parts. Second one, you would use just simple basic integration, e to the x, e to the x. Uh, it's kind of an odd case. Then we have, which, what's, what about this one? This would be a u sub, and same with the last one, would also be a u sub. But now, let's move on over to the double integrals here. Um, so this is uh, like the... I guess, skeleton of a double integral, and that dA right there, that's called the differential. Um, and there's two ways to evaluate this. You can have it, um, the function evaluated with respect to dx, dy, or with respect to dy, dx. Notice the ending has changed there. Um, but to notice what that r means, that means the region in the xy plane. So that r is like your region, that area uh, that you're going to be integrating in between now. So, Let's take a look at Fubini theorem. Um, pretty, pretty, pretty much what it says is, um, like you know, I said the dx dy dy dx. That's a different way of doing it, right? Well, Fubini's theorem says that you can integrate in either order. Um, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's just kind of the way. Say, look, both ways should produce the same answer. However, um, oh, that's what I said there. So yeah, you can integrate in either order. So oh no, don't look. You didn't see anything again, if that makes sense. Okay, anyway, so a little bit more on Fubini's theorem. Uh, pretty much there are, like I said, you can integrate two different ways. Like for this function, for example, 1 over x, you have an improper integral here. If you're integrating from, say, 0 to 3, um, if you integrate using double integrals one way, you might get a finite number. Uh, and if you integrate using the other method, you might get an infinite area, um, depending but Fubini's theorem just says, let's throw away all those cases and just say, look, you'll get a finite number. Um, just take that finite number as the actual one. Don't really worry about that infinity. It's not as, um, I guess you could say it's not as important. Now, this is actually very similar to the extreme value theorem, um, which says, oh, you should know it. I'm going to say, what is the extreme value theorem? And you should say, um, if f of x is continuous on a closed interval, then there is a maximum and minimum of value. So we'll, di we'll diagram that and show that here. So a and b here is your closed interval. Um, that green line, or curve I should say, um, is your f of x, your function. And notice how it attains a maximum and minimum value. Now it can even attain two maximum and minimum values, or absolutes I should say, absolute maximums and absolute minimums. Um, and these are your extreme values. Um, so that's kind of your example there, that no matter what you want to get to that line, there's going to be a maximum or minimum value um, to get there. 
and it would could be the endpoints too, because that would be a max or min. Um, so this video is kind of getting long. I usually want to stop around 10 minutes, so I'll just stop it here. I um, thought this would be a good introduction. Um, work on your integration skills, and you'll definitely need them for the videos ahead.